Um, some of you know this, I was thinking of allowing a period for public comment before we start our meeting. My intention is not to get into something we are accustomed to doing where we're going back and forth with the audience as we go through the relevant um, agenda items. Something also, uh, you also, I believe, all have a letter right there, and some of you have seen this by email. Harriet Brickman of Bottoms Road has been researching the law on this. And it may be that I expressed, uh, you may all remember I wrote a letter to the residents of the six roads we looked at a couple weeks ago. And in that, I said that uh, if a road was deemed unsuitable to become a public way, we would cease all maintenance and stop blowing the snow. I may have expressed that too broadly. Um, the law doesn't seem to say cease all maintenance. The law, the law in question specifically talks about snow removal. Um, now, that said, I have no idea where the law stands on this other maintenance. So I, I'm not endorsing the fact that other maintenance, therefore, will go forward as usual. I have no idea, but that said, it's certainly quite possible I overreached when I said it that way. So basically, we're just standing back from that issue and, and not making any determination until the city solicitor gives us some advice as to where that all stands. Um, I was thinking there might be so many people that we'd have to have a list and uh, really ration the, the time very carefully. It looks like everyone could speak for three minutes or so, uh, maybe even more than once. <laughs> um, but but the, <coughs> the intention is to give every, anyone who would like to speak three minutes to uh, tell us what's on your mind, give us your thoughts regarding your, your particular private way. Um, can we make a statement about the meeting being recorded, if that's the case? Sure. Um, this meeting is being recorded by the North Street Neighbors Association. Mm -hmm. Mimi Andrews is handling the, the iPod, iPad there. So, um, if you would please, uh, whoever wants to speak, state your name. And I'd appreciate it if we get to everyone who would like to say something before we, in case anyone has any uh, closing thoughts and they'd like another crack at expressing something that's come to their mind. Yes, please, would you? <clears throat> would anyone, anyone like to say anything? I think I would. Okay. I'm Shawnee McCall, and I'm in the butter of Massachusetts Avenue. And due to the proximity of the YMCA, with very heavy traffic on Massasoit Avenue, the parking that often overlaps driveways, mm -hmm. et cetera, I think it would really be safer if Massasoit Avenue were a city street because there would be um, ability to, to slow down. I think when it's a private way, it's hard to stand out there and say to everybody, you can't park here, just slow down. And also with the plowing, um, as you all know, with driveways, when the plow goes by, you often have to shovel out your driveway three or four times. And that would be very difficult on Massasoit Avenue if the plows keep going by and plowing them in. Whereas if the city plows it, it usually gets plowed pretty well. So that's just my statement on Massasoit Thank you. Avenue. Mm -hmm. Andy. Well, being Shirley, I'll just, just follow up on her. Do, do oh, so your name? State your name for oh, the record. Sorry. Andy Pollock, 99 Massasoit Street. Um, the, the, the problem that is you know, perhaps not your committee's immediate concern is that the parking on that on Massasoit Street throughout the year now is quite intense at several points during the day. And in the wintertime, when there's snow down, sometimes with banks that narrow the street, it's a, it's a, real, it's a real problem. And, you know, a, a big truck coming through opens things up some. If it's going to be left to our snowblowers, it, it's really going to be a safety concern there. And I, think, uh, I hope somebody looks at that if that's the direction things go. Um, completely different from that, uh, 
I've lived on in this house now in this corner for 20 plus years. It never dawned on me that it was anything but a city street. Um, and it's disappointing. Uh, my name is Ray Jackson from 23 Bowling Road, and we've lived up there for 30 something years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the town has always maintained Bowling Road as long as we've been up there. It's been longer than that. Yeah, probably longer than that. So, um, as far as the laws, the research, I did do some research as well, and I did find something uh, maintain, uh, pertaining to the maintenance part of it. Um, so you probably have to go a little bit more in detail with it, but um, mm -hmm. there is such a thing. Well, I'll follow. I'm, I'm Harriet Brickman of 53 Bottoms Road, and um, uh, we we appreciate what Ned has called the ambiguity of Bob, Bottoms Road, and we also I, I want to say we also appreciate everybody's efforts to um, bring some clarification to this issue. Uh, Bottoms Road is a private way open to public use, and at this point, we don't wish to challenge that. Our concern has been about uh, the stated connection between plowing and maintenance, and then it's about the continuation of the maintenance. There is a prov provision in the law for maintenance of private ways open to public use. It's N. It's section N of that same chapter that the Wellfleet um, um, decision was based on. And given the topography, this is especially relevant um, because we provide an, a natural drainage for a much larger area. There is also a, a responsibility for the provision of public safety, which has historically been provided on private ways open to public use. We, we think that the board needs to sort through more information before an informed recommendation can be made about Bottoms Road either way. And we respectfully would request that the city continue its services on this private way open for public use. Okay. And I'm Tom Reardon. I also have 53 Bottoms Road. I don't have a lot to add to that. I mean, obviously, I have shared opinions. Um, but I just want to want to um, sort of state that we have lived there since I think it was 1981. So we're looking at 30 plus years and in all that time that I've been aware of and as well as stories prior to that um, the city has had a sort of a de facto maintenance plowing role uh, for the sort of the, 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 the road as it's being used whatever time um, and that they've also done things like try to do like we had, had talked about with the water management type of thing issues with the water and it's uh, it's a chronic, a chronic problem that can't be addressed by any particular individual for that whole area. Um, and that the city's taken that on historically. And that, that you know, it's appreciated by everyone. Um, and we'd like that to not change. And what I, I think the point I'd like to make primarily is, is that the city's been doing a lot of stuff de facto. And that I think Ray's suggestion about there being other, other Components of the law that's written into the state statutes that there are other options rather than black and white, it's the same road or it's not. But there are provisions for a protocol to to allow for the city to participate in, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, but to um, maintain and or plow private ways that are open to public use for the public purposes. And there, there's a, a formal way of doing that rather than just de facto. And I think the issue that the, the Solicitor General was bringing up was the fact you can't do it de facto. That you have to literally decide what you're going to do. It's not that you can't do it. And that's that's the only that's my understanding of a little part of the, the legal aspect of it. You know. And uh, I hope we can come to something that's going to work for everyone, the city as well as, as all the neighbors. Thank you. Going to speak also to, uh, to Taylor Street and at the meeting we had there. She has property on two streets. Yeah. Uh, it seemed to me that we all agreed it would remain a private way, that we would take care of the plowing, 
I don't see anybody else here from Phyllis Peegan. And I think we were all in agreement with you as well that we don't expect it. Would you like to make any comments about private ways? No, I'll just listen. Or anything else that's on your mind? <laughs> no. Well, if I know I hear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then let's uh, move on with the meeting. Um, so we have, let's see. Let's accept the, the minutes of the meetings, of uh, previous meetings. And then I'd be interested in the motion to <coughs> move to to the private ways first, and then we'll hold off the uh, contracts and whatnot for later in the evening. <coughs> so first are the minutes of the October 10th board meeting. Move approval. Second. Move approval. Also. Yep. All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 Next, the minutes of the October 13th, uh, the Saturday morning meeting. Move approval. Second. Move Again, all set. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have a motion to move to old business private ways. Uh, I move that we move to, to uh, old business private ways. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, my thought, and it's open to uh, your thoughts, would be that we take them one at a time and organize a discussion using. Um, spreadsheet that was passed out. And I believe the first one was the um, Park Avenue, the one off of Trumbull with the 15 condominiums. So are you looking for a motion from us to... Not necessarily. Let, uh, thank you for bringing that up. In the handouts today. It's, it's good. I meant to I meant to stop at this point and talk a little bit about this. Thank you. I give you at least give you my thoughts. Um, BJ passed out among other things a sheet with a couple of brief motions at the top. Did this um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I think she held on. So I got one. Yeah. You got one. Yeah. This is a BPW has a bag. Looks, looks like um, two paragraphs. Yeah, you know, I think I didn't do it. Looks I like think this. it's on the printer. Okay. BJ is in the process of uh, distributing <laughs> that. To uh huh. <laughs> so, basically, I'm, I'm proposing only two of any number of possible motions. Um, in other words, there could be a motion to uh, continue discussion on a particular street. There could be. Anything you can think of. So I'm not trying to narrow it down to either this one or that one. Uh, the motions read, first, ah, thank you. the BPW has evaluated such and such, and we feel that this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the BPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. That's, that's a possible motion. In the case, for example, of a road that we think should remain a private way forever. Or, as you can see, the other one is <coughs> worded this way because you'll recall we have not received a petition from these right. uh, residents. Now, if we were to use the second mo motion, the BPW has evaluated such and such, and we feel that this private way could be a successful candidate for formal acceptance as a city street. Therefore, we encourage the residents of such and such to submit a petition to the Northampton City Council in order to initiate the acceptance process. This implies that were this street to come before us, we would likely uh, recommend that the City Council accept the street. Uh, it, I suppose it doesn't guarantee it, but that, that would be the implication of, of passing that motion in my mind. Um, and again, I, I would stress this just a couple of ideas. So we're not searching for how would we word that? What what should that a seem final like? Decision. Yeah. We want to make it open to discussion. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Um is there any merit in 
referencing the section of the law that we believe um, prohibits us from plowing private ways? I actually spent a few minutes trying to pin that down. And after um, my possible fiasco about seesaw maintenance, I decided not to attempt to make this <laughs> legalistic. Uh, All right. There are another question. It relates to the comment regarding private ways open for public use. That whole concept. Mm -hmm. That's it's a relatively new concept for us that, that, that I haven't heard discussed before. And I wondered if, if there was an understanding of what kind of public use. Um, because as I think of many of these private ways, they're really only there to serve the residents on the street. And they don't serve a public use. There's no park at the end of the private way that the public goes to. There's no right. scenic vista. There's no... So I'm, I'm, but I don't know that that's how you interpret public use of a private way. Because you can go on all these private ways and we haven't been kicked off yet. So that's sort of like public use. But I don't... I can't imagine that's what it means. It's private, I know, I, it's I was private attentive. Property, essentially. Private, private ways are private property. Private ways are private property. But I don't know what the public use might be, and I don't know how it might influence our discussions. I, I, you know, I, I, I heard that distinction. You know, Tom made that distinction. I was kind of thinking, boy, I don't know. Is that, what about that? Uh, Alan Seawald has been crystal clear that we have to stop plowing private ways. And he has not made any attempt to make a fine distinction about public private ways that are open to the public versus those that might not be. Uh, I think in a way they're all open to the public if we're plowing them. Uh, that's all I can say on that. He's made no attempt. So our limited way so far is, is, is more of a black and white issue. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Ned? We've had numerous meetings about this, and that, and the city attorney has never made any attempt to make that fine distinction uh, thus far. It's certainly worth checking out. So anyway, so that's what the uh, the two motions are that BJ just passed out. And again, I would stress these are just two possible motions. Uh, but at the end of each discussion, as we discuss each street, I hope we can come to some kind of conclusion, even if it's only that we should continue discussing at a later meeting, this street, and then we'll move to the next street. So as I said, the first street would be Park Avenue, which is the, the little one off Trumbull Road that ends in the parking lot for the condominium. Can I make a motion? So we can start the discussion of it? Okay. <laughs> Um, that the BPW has evaluated Park Avenue, Park Avenue, and we feel that this is a private way that does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. And in light of this finding, we hereby direct the BPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. Okay. Ned, you've done some research on this. Would you like to take a second and? Sure, I provided a quick bullet for you. It's not the full file, but <clears throat> I do have the full files of the research that go back into the uh, mid to late 1800s. Uh, basically, Park Avenue was created in 1887 as an access way to the original house that was there, which is now known as Seven Park Avenue. Um, the lot was split in two, which created 15 Trumbull Road, which is also abuts Park Avenue. And that's when this easement came through, or this access right away came through. It's been carried in all the deeds ever since. And it specifically stated as a private way. So that's that's been specifically articulated over the years? It's, I, I have all the research here on, on it. We can go through it if you'd like. So if we, look, if we, if we go through the decision matrix, uh, current design standards, on that? <coughs> well, it certainly doesn't look like it means current design standards to me. And I do believe when we were out there on the site visit that we were aware that there was only, that the first stretch was the private, the private way, 
And that whole area that they were waving their arms and indicating that we'd been plowing was, in my mind, a parking lot that was at the end of the private way. Right. And subsequent developers of uh, residences along the way added. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably by paving the old yard. Right. Mm -hmm. Certainly not conducive to snow plowing. You know, uh, there's the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, that was one of the things that I recall bringing up is that the, there is no place to s store the snow at the end of the private way. Consequently, the DPW pushes it across the parking area to a place that's really, um, I guess, a green strip between the next property and theirs. Um, but they noted that it wasn't adequate to store the, store the amount of snow that might happen over the Eric, there's no off street parking. Yes. I, I was just thinking for the benefit of the audience, it might help if we just explained what this sheet does. Okay. And do you mind if I do it? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, Mike, Mike Parsons was <laughs> instrumental <laughs> in developing this. In, a, in an abbreviated version, um, we've developed or we've selected eight categories that we think. Uh, identify characteristics of a public way and um, in an attempt to evaluate uh, all the private ways in the city in a uniform manner, we were applying these eight categories to each street that's under consideration and um, feel that if um, a street meets five or more of these categories in a positive way, then it's likely to be a likely, a likely candidate to become a public way. Are, are um, they legal criteria? No, no. You'll hear that. You'll always criteria. discuss them as we go as we okay. go through your own criteria. Our own criteria as we looked at. Yeah, because we're not aware of. Uh, we, we wanted to relax, I think, very legal standards which might apply to current subdivisions, for example. And we don't we don't think that's the standard to apply. So we developed more relaxed criteria. And could I just add on that? We wanted to have an underlying rationality so we weren't just arbitrarily making choices. Right, right. So this provides a first cut at our decision process, but it, it doesn't necessarily provide the answer. It still takes some judgment once we look at the results of this sheet. And similarly, we developed five, identified five um, criteria that are typical of um, a street that a private way that will likely always be a private way and um, at least at the moment have said if a, if a street meets three or more of these criteria then it's not likely that it could um, be approved as a public way in the future just because of the characteristics of the street. And so that's the test that we've applied each of these streets to and that's what we were going through. Right. So that's now. the discussion we're having right now. I, I, all I would add to uh, what Mike has had to say is that at some point we just have to make a decision that's to some extent uh, case by case. So simply because something has five points as a street doesn't mean it's guaranteed to become a street. And referring to uh, design standards, Practically none of the private ways would meet current design standards. We have to rule out almost all of them. Right. So we have to, we're, we're trying to accommodate as many of the streets as we possibly can. The hope is to accept as many as possible. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. well, Jerry, mm -hmm. didn't sound like it, but I'll clarify question. Does, does, it, does, it mean, does it mean if a road is accepted as a public way that the city will then be bound to bring it up to those design standards? No. In fact, there are cases in the past where the city has, in fact, brought a road up to uh, a certain specification, but then back charges all of the uh, abutters. Uh, so there's no requirement that that occur. And there is precedent, I think, even on your street for charging the abutters for work. Oh, really? That I know. No. I, don't think um, I haven't found it for abutters, <coughs> but I found on other orders from the uh, council. Uh, but that is an option that, that yeah. could be selected among all the possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is, what we're looking for is uh, 
We're looking for ways to say yes. Oh, okay, because um, I don't know what made me think otherwise. So that's, that's, that's not really the well, I have one more comment. It doesn't mm -hmm. particularly address yours. Um, yes, sir. But there are um, at least nine private ways in the city that the city has not been providing services to. And so we've included those in this analysis um, because we need to, we feel a need to be consistent in, in treating private ways similarly. And, and the group that we're not providing services to um, are, are some that we look to. And if, if one under consideration is similar to the ones that we're not providing service to, we, I've used that as a guideline in my evaluation. It's a data point. Yeah. Can I ask why the services were not provided? Was that by choice or, or demand on someone's part? Or just we have no sure. Uh, you can look at roads like Mandel Road at Smith College. It's in between the quad. It's actually Smith property. They, they take care of it. They maintain it. How about and Shepherd's Hollow? Uh, we maintain Shepherd's Hollow. I mean, a, a road on Smith is different, no? But you look at uh, Irwin Place. Irwin Place is actually part of Cereal's parking lot now. It just mm -hmm. doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more out there. I'm trying to think off the top of my head about the number of them, but they're... Not Rail, Railroad Ave. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, and then you short places like the, 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 um, There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, the co-housing out. Is that what that's called? Co-housing out on uh, Florence Road. There's co-housing, and then there's Rocky Hill co-housing. There's two different projects out there. Beautiful streets. The, we, I believe, made them build those streets to subdivision standards. Subdivision standards. They're fabulous, but we don't plow them. Mm -hmm. So this but is that was their choice, right? They just said, "No, we'll take care of it." As <coughs> they agreed to that. Yes, yeah. but at some point, I can imagine feeling. Badly, the other equally private property is being plowed. It's a, it's a complicated. Mm -hmm. one, other, one other thought before we get into the details. The six private ways under consideration tonight were selected as, as the first group to evaluate because, it, and, and first cut, they, they look like private ways. So, so, I don't think that the outcome of our decisions tonight is necessarily going to be typical of our decisions going forward. Right. You know, although we do have a street on our agenda tonight that is up for acceptance as a public way. Recommendation. Okay, so Park <laughs> Ave, uh, we've agreed that it's not conducive to plowing. Uh, multiple residences, it does have Certainly, so I think 15. Mm -hmm. Through Street, no. Actively used by non residents. Probably not. Guests of residents. Hmm? Guests. Yes. Of yeah. Yeah, sure. A dedicated travel lane in each direction. <laughs> by non-residents. I think what we were trying to get at there was use that wasn't related to any sort of residential activity, i.e. outside use. So right. this sort of, this concept of public access to a private road kind of thing. Um, and I, I don't see that in that situation at, at all. Okay. Could you state the eight criteria? Does the roadway meet current design standards? Uh, is it paved? Those two are sort of connected. Is the road conducive to plowing? Uh, is there room for snow storage, a plow turnaround, uh, storage along the roadway for the, sh the snow that gets pushed off? Uh, does it serve multiple residences, six or even more? Um, is it a through street? Is it an important connector between two, two streets? Uh, is the roadway actively used by non-residents? Is there a lane dedicated for travel in, 
in each each one. If it's a one way, conceivably you could have a one way private way. Is it a, does it have a reasonable lane for travel? If it's a two way road, are the two lanes? And then other factors, uh, public good, historical, uh, any covenants or title information we come across that seems to bear on the decision. Well, the only question I have is that if making it difficult to plow in the criteria, is that something you would want to privatize? I mean, maybe just don't get out the road. But if it's hard to plow, why would that make it a criteria for not plowing? I don't quite get that one. These are under public roads. Uh, I under, well, no, they're the private roads you're looking at. And that one of your criteria is how hard is it to plow. I just found that curious, that's all. We separated into, if I'm right. Because I would imagine there's plenty of roads difficult to plow in the city. Right. right. We have two, two categories, criteria related to public ways and criteria related to private ways. And so the ones that we've been discussing so far that Terry just mentioned were criteria related to public ways. Okay. Now we're going to discuss criteria related to private ways. It, it, okay. It's somewhat like arbitrary. That, that's okay. There is no, right. we can't go to section four, paragraph three, sentence two, and get a list of these coming, you know, coming down to us from the legislature or from the state. Yeah. So we're doing the best we can to come up with criteria. Yeah, I think it's hard to plow. You might want to be in charge of it, but that's the But that's not that's not the way we're finding this. What we're saying is, is if, if it's easy to plow, mm -hmm. that's that's a positive. I know. We're not I'm saying, understanding. but we're not, but. We're not doing the flip side. We're, we're not saying if it's hard to plow, we don't want to do it. Well, kind of, because if it's easy, then it's positive, no? No, it's it's, well, it's, it's only it's only it's only it's only criteria for for, right. for positive. It's not it's not used as a negative. Okay. Uh, we have a similar situation, which we'll address, I think, when we about utility utilities when we get to the the uh, other other side. Okay. So looking looking uh, continuing on the park app. Uh, there are no public utilities, private water line. That's correct. And probably a sewer, private sewer pipe That's coming correct. out to the main on the street. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, parking lot are undefined limits. Certainly has that. Well, let's see. All right, so oh, I see. Okay. The, the lanes. Yep. I guess I could read them all every time, but. Well, I was just thinking for the yeah. purposes of so the initial. Uh, dedicated lanes for two-way traffic. Uh, dedicated few buildings. It doesn't s seem to fall into that category with all those condominiums. Parking lot or undefined uh, boundaries. Yes, certainly seems to have that. Similar to other private ways. Kind of unique, actually. But We've well, only seen no, six of them. Railroad, railroad Street <laughs> yeah. looks like a, it must have been a street that they built a parking lot around, or Irwin, mm -hmm. that they just talked about. It's a street, but it looks like a parking lot. I mean, it, there's just no definition to it, right. and so that I think that's why that's why in my mind it park met that similar criteria. Mm -hmm. It just kind of blows out into this big area that serves multiple purposes. It's no longer a way. Right. Oh, it certainly doesn't look like a road. <coughs> no. Any any other thoughts about this one? people ready to vote? So the motion on the floor is to determine that we feel this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become a, an accepted city street. And pursuant to that, we are going to direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. So that's, that's what a positive and affirmative vote will be. Mm -hmm. So all in favor of that motion. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. And I assume we're going to communicate these votes to the abutters in the same yes. way that we invite them. Everyone will get a registered letter. 
certified. All right, next we met at Massasoit Street, the Massasoit Avenue off of Massasoit Street, across from the YMCA parking lot. Then you want to talk about... Uh, Shall I make a motion? Oh. <laughs> All right. I make a motion that uh, the BBW has evaluated Massasoit Avenue, and we feel that this is a private way that does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the BPW to see snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. So what I was able to find out through the Registry of Deeds was in 1881, a plan was recorded that showed a number of lots between Franklin and Massasoit Streets. The particular lots in question that we're looking at that surround Massasoit Avenue are lots 1 and 2, as shown in that plan. And sometime between 1882 and 1910 is the first dedication or conversation and any deeds of the right-of-way that appears. So it would appear that these two lots were subdivided sometime in that 20-year time frame, 28-year time frame, and Massasoit Avenue was created. Because it's referred to it in deeds after 1910 as Massasoit Avenue. So that's what... Um, I found out that I can't find any municipal ownership reference in any of the deeds either. It's uh, listed as being uh, 10 feet wide and I think 100 feet long. Uh, this is 200. 200? Yeah. Okay, sorry. So uh, just running through the list for purposes of discussion, current design standards. It is paved, certainly. <coughs> By the city. Mm -hmm. um, conducive to plowing, snow storage, turnaround. I think that's all problematic. Uh, serves three residences, is that correct? Four. Two. 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 The houses that have funded on Massasoit Ave use it for the driveway access? One, one does, one does. on the left does. And at the tail end of it, there are some abutters that come in from Franklin Street. That's why there were six parties that were given certified mails rather than just four. And it has a private owner, this one? A current private owner? The tail end, as you go down Massasoit Avenue, there's two properties off of Franklin Street that abut the back end of that 10 foot wide mm -hmm. private way. Mm -hmm. So they're also given certified mail. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about pedestrians. I don't see a way of exit. There is no exit. No, there's no exit. No, yeah, right. So but it touches their property. <coughs> yes, back. I understand, but I'm just saying that there's no You know, it should have been mentioned before that there is regular foot traffic that occurs from people coming from Franklin. Those properties which are on Franklin and then up using Massasoit Street as a Massasoit Avenue as a, as a, as a, a pathway. Regular right. traffic throughout you know, seven days a week. <coughs> okay, so multiple residences. Uh, on, no. Through Street, no, except perhaps by pedestrians. Actively used by non-resident. I think that's the one that might possibly get checked off. People walking through. Yeah, if, based there on is what some we just heard. Like going, cutting through right. to get to the Y or something. Right. Lane dedicated to travel in each direction. Um, other factors. Uh, no city utilities. So moving on to the next keg. No city utilities. They're all private. Is that true? Is the water line on that street private? It is. It, once once it leaves the water main out in uh, Massasoit, it, 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 you know, with, after a few feet, it's private from then on. Is the utility thing one of the private public criteria? Is it private way criteria? They got all the public way criteria. Though. I'm getting. Um, the way we we. 
chose to look at utilities was that um, a lack of public utilities was not sufficient to make it ineligible, but presence of utilities, conversely, was not automatically sufficient to make it eligible. There are a few, there are going to be a few exceptions in each direction. Mm -hmm. That's why we're reluctant to make it hard and fast. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just sorry to be an audience member. So, but how could you have city water without, with a private, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, they for example, have I have city water and it comes under my lawn. The city doesn't own that pipe under my lawn. But that would be true for many, many, many houses, no? Almost yeah. all. Almost all. Yeah. So I'm confused in by some, that also. In some cases, the little pipe comes up the driveway. Right, so I'm confused by that criteria then um, for anything, but that's okay. I don't well, have Well, if we had big honk and water mains coming but up. But we don't. Um, right. So, so that's one less reason why it needs to be a public street. But if it's non-existent in the city, is it a relevant issue? Uh, that's all. I don't know. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so no city utilities, single lane um, for two-way traffic, yes. Dedicated to just a few buildings. Uh, parking lot or undefined limits, not so much. Right. Great. Similar to other private ways. I think, I think we agree it was. Uh, there are statutes in the city, for example, that uh, you can have common driveways for uh, for three houses. It's a, it's a category. Any other discussion about necessary Avenue? All right. So the motion is again to say that we do not, do not feel that this private way meets reasonable standards to become an accepted city street and that we're going to direct the department to cease snow removal. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Uh, next, we went to um, Taylor Street, the hill off of Jackson, Jackson, Jackson Street. like to make a motion that the BPW has evaluated Taylor Street and we feel that this private way does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the BPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. Um, the research I was able to find was in <clears throat> 1897 there was a plan recorded at the Registry of Deeds showing Taylor Street to be 40 feet wide from Jackson to what is now known as Norfolk Avenue, back then it was just private property, uh, with 39 new house lots created, including those along Prospect Street. Uh, the street did not get built, and numerous lots were aggregated into existing building lots that are there now. Uh, there's one in particular, I think, that took up five or six buildings of those number of lots into one lot. And the um, just to note, the traveled way is about 12 foot wide and paved. And was that uh, plan uh, recorded about the same time as the parallel street on the, across the field? I didn't do, well, actually I do have some research on Taylor Avenue, which is right, across the Were they originally uh, <coughs> a big circular driveway? I think originally the Gananzo and both of them, uh, Mrs. Ganondi, Prospect Heights, and Taylor Street. Okay. Uh, But you were concerned about the connector between Prospect and, and Prospect. Well, it just and, uh, just clarifying that we it was basically kind of one big loop, and we right. just we made half of it a city street. And right. And it was private back because the city used to go right. up one, lift the plow, drive through that driveway, and then go down another. Right. So that the connector is a private. Uh, so let's see, um, Taylor. So your question was on Prospect Heights, which was originally planned to be known as Taylor Avenue. That plan was recorded in the registry in 1910. So it was a number of years later that Prospect Heights was created. And it was the same thing. There was supposed to be 33 lots on um, Prospect Heights. 
I believe there's uh, approximately four houses on it now, five. I have three units. Three? Okay. Yeah. Not in prospect types. Oh, no, no, no. I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm you're here. Here. Yeah. So, current design standards. No. Hey, no. yes. Uh, conducive to snow plowing. And it's pretty easy in that respect. Big field. Multiple residences. Does it have six or more residents? residences? Mm -hmm. Through street. Actively used by non-residents. No. Um, there is some use because there's a, uh, a DA Sullivan storage facility in the back there um, that we took a look at. It didn't look. Were you? Were you it didn't look it, heavily it used. It didn't look heavily used, <laughs> but it is. It is back there. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. recently used while nope. we were there. Right. That's true, and it had been recently used while we were there, but it didn't look. It didn't look like it was. It's not regulated. They wanted to improve it, uh -huh. but when it went before whatever the board, um, it was not conducive for fire trucks or anything like that to get so they were denied that kind of. So it, it is a, I guess it's the whole right of way mm -hmm. yeah. to find its own lot of stuff. Yeah. And it's basically storage. They don't really have to. Uh, lane dedicated to travel in each direction. No. 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 Okay. Uh, no, no, all the factors. Uh, there are no no city utilities under the roadway. Uh, single lane for two way traffic. It's closer to that, I think, than a two way road. Uh, clearly dedicated to only a few buildings. does look like a street. It's not a parking lot. Uh, similar to other private ways. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Any comments? Well, isn't it not a little bizarre to plow half of a row and not the other half just from the political or social Well, they're, they're separated by about 100 feet. I see. But so it's not just a loop. They go parallel I'm picturing to half each other. Of a loop. I see. A lawn okay. and a house. Just um, because if you're right there and you just, you know, it just seems kind of petty. But if it's not like that, it's not. You must pay. Yeah, it seems, you know, I mean, if you're right there, by the road. Um, all right. So, uh, again, the motion was to um, indicate that this private way does not need reasonable standards and to direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? family also donated the other half to the city, and that should be respected in some way, but I guess not. Well, the other half is a city. Right, they yes. donated it. Yes. We Same people who drove were not going to plow, yes. donated that to the city. But interestingly, at the, at, during our site visit, okay. uh, the resident specifically said that the reason they did that was because they didn't want to plow it. Okay, we then move to a meadow. Uh, wait, wait <laughs> we then move to Meadow oh, wow. Avenue uh, in Florence. Okay. Um, would you like to make a motion? Sure. Yeah. Three, three from the bottom. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that the BPW has evaluated Meadow Ave and we feel that this is a private way, does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. Okay. Certainly not current design standard. I don't think, Terry, I don't think we really need to I mean, okay. go through it, but no, I mean, this is one where the property owner said that they didn't want it to go Fair to enough. the city. So. And it doesn't meet any of our criteria. Yeah, so right. okay. I don't think we need to spend okay. any time on it. So, all in favor of passing the motion to discontinue services on this road? Aye. 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 Uh, then we move to uh, Seven Water Street off of, uh, well, basically it is Seven Water Street in Leeds. So Water, Water Street, Street extension. extension. Water Street Extension. Oh, they made that up. They did. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that the BPW has evaluated 
Seven Water Street or Seven or Water Street Extension, and we feel that this is a private way that does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. Again, this is I, a fairly. I, is one, straight another one. I think you need to modify your vote to some degree on this because it is not listed as a private way. For some odd reason, the uh, DPW has been plowing this street for, according to Mr. McCarthy, 40 years. This driveway. This, this driveway. Even the owner admits it's a driveway. Yeah. Yeah. So, how about if I modify it so that if the BPW has evaluated this area? No. This, this driveway? This, this driveway. Or this, this, uh, <laughs> this right. roadway um, that has been plowed. And we, in light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to see snow and ice removal on this road, on this roadway. Second. On, on this one, um, the resident um, informed us that, that his belief was that the plowing had been established as part of a personal relationship with, with city officials, and uh, that therefore there hadn't been an actual criteria for doing it, and that he was, he was accepting of the idea that that was going to end. I would like to clarify that it was City Council. City Council. <laughs> 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 I was trying to talk things through that one. <laughs> it's not giving the names here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor of discontinuing services on the extension? Aye. 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 Okay. It's snow plowing on the extension. Er, snow plowing, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we then. Met at the Bottoms Road off of Clement Street. I'd like to put forward a motion that the BPW has evaluated Bottoms Road and we feel that this is a private way and does not meet reasonable standards to become an accepted city street. In light of this finding, we hereby direct the DPW to cease snow and ice removal on this roadway. Second. Is it bottoms with a UN? Yes. yes. Oh, because we have it wrong here. Because it's named after a person. Right. Mm -hmm. The first farm in the area. Mm -hmm. He was a developer. He was one of the first developers in the area. Yes, bottoms. So. Shall we walk through the criteria first? Sure. Um, at least in our initial pass, out of the uh, doesn't meet current design standards, not paved, it is conducive to plowing. Certainly. Uh, it doesn't serve six or more residents. It's not a true street in the typical sense of the word. Pedestrian street. Yeah. 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 I would put the check in the next column. Actively used by non-residents. Yeah. Yeah. How so? Just pedestrian use. That's where we did. Road. That's where we did pedestrians in the other one. I, but I haven't heard the pedestrians oh, used by them. They walk through Harriet Hall's property regularly. They make it available to anyone. People to, hiking through. Absolutely, all the time. People, <coughs> people, <coughs> people do traverse a lot between Willis Street. Walk their dogs. Um, to get over to the Clement Street area, mm -hmm. the, the Bay State Village area, yeah. and go back and forth. And we saw what could have been a marker at the other end. Right? Yeah. 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 That, 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 that big boulder. Almost like a yeah. granite boulder. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lane dedicated travel in each direction. Right. Other factors, public good, they're kind of uh, well, historical, recreational, landscape. Yeah, it overlaps with that, but I think that that's one of the things that it really does have. I didn't know that would be relevant to you guys, but I didn't particularly bring it up when DP or DPW came, but it's a very beautiful world that people it's really gorgeous. enjoy walking on, and they do regularly. And, and what do you call it, skiing in the winter, and bike riding, and horseback riding. Yeah. Uh, there are no city utilities under the roadbed. They're private. Um, what, like what? But the yeah. city used to maintain them. When I first moved up there, later 70s, early 80s, they would also fix right outside my home. 
And then middle 80, I would say, that's when that um, stopped. There is a shut off there, too. Yeah. But it has city, I mean, it has gas going up. up. That's, yeah, that's public. City. I know, it's yeah. public, though. It's not all, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know, water. But those are private pipes and stuff. <coughs> So it's a single lane dedicated to a few buildings. It's certainly well defined. Similar to other private ways. And this one has the added complication of the drainage issues. It's certainly got the most extreme drainage problems well, of any that we look at. You know, at. I would say that this road serves at city services as drainage. Um, because it's draining well, we're, properties. So we're going to try to talk about it. But it is draining Thank properties you. all Thank over you. the place. So this has the added issue of drainage. It's it's not clear to me exactly how that plays into this. Because you're talking specifically about snow mm -hmm. removal? Yeah. yeah. Well, snow removal Excuse is Excuse me, can. please. Okay. Thank you. Now, the, the, the drainage that we're talking about on the property, I mean, there was there was some, that discussion about the new subdivision that went on off of Florence Road and that it provided some drainage in there. But from my recollection, when you're doing a subdivision approval, you're dealing with trying to mitigate the storm and water drainage off the, your site. <coughs> well, I think the way the road is certainly. I don't know about private property a lot. Subdivisions like High Meadow would have to meet pre and post development peak flows on stormwater management. Mm -hmm. So basically, they look at it as an undeveloped state, and after it's all built out, it has to equal the same flows. Uh, the flow durations can be longer, but the flows can increase. Yeah. It, it crowns and starts to go down again. I, but I don't think, I think it's just a huge hillside that is cut by the road. I and mean, otherwise, it would have gone down to the river hundreds of years ago. But as you say, Mike, we're specifically, we're narrowly focused tonight on snow removal. Snow removal, and and does this road have, does it even look like a public way? You know, like, like most of the other public ways in the city. I mean, that's why we developed these eight criteria, was to give us some guidance on does it does it look like what's right. a public way mean to us, and does it does it meet a public way? Now it it it, in, um, it may provide some functions of a public way. I don't really understand the stormwater drainage issue. I've heard what people have said, but I don't quite understand where our responsibility is there. But I don't know that 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 in itself is enough to make it a public way. I mean, a public way. Clearly, you need one lane of traffic for each direction. Right? And I will say, anecdotally, I took my wife over. She couldn't quite picture where it was. I said, oh, you got to see it's a really pretty street. And so we drove up part way, but it would have felt intrusive to go up to your yard. And I know, but I, so we actually backed out. <laughs> so we, we stopped well short of your house because you know, it felt intrusive. It didn't feel... But you can't have criteria based on feelings, though, can we, really? I, mean, I, I don't think we do. But okay, but I've heard that word thrown out a few times. Does it feel like a public way? Does it feel like? And mm. well, no, we, we, I think that's we, back, we back down to that terminology because, as we said at the beginning, if we use subdivision criteria, right, many streets wouldn't meet the, right. the standard, no, and, and so we don't want to do that. So in backing down, we we pick some some middle ground that we think is appropriate for the city, but. It's admittedly squishy, though, at some point. Right. Yeah, yeah. It is. But but this, you know, the eight criteria this meets, perhaps, too. And so it... Well, I, don't, I, would, I think you're underestimating the need of the city for that road. I really do. If you would like to see what happens when it washes out, you're welcome to come see. But uh, uh, well, well, hold, uh, hold the thought. Yeah. We're not talking drainage tonight. It's well, snow is related to drainage. Snow and ice. And clogging it up and the like. Oh, okay. They're not separate, really. All right, so the motion on the floor is to call it a public way, or to, <coughs> pardon me, the motion on the floor is to say we do not feel it meets the standards to become a public way, and we are in fact directing the department to discontinue stone ice removal. 
Any further discussion about that? All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Is there a way we can follow up, though? Because I think this discussion about the maintenance question is one that I would like us to pursue. No, snow and ice are not separate from water drainage. They're well, kind hang, of hang on. Let, let, please let us talk. So it sounds like we have, in some cases, done some work on private ways around maintenance issues and charged back. And I, I'm not aware of that. And I guess I, as a board, I would like us to get a little information about that and to start pursuing some of these things that look like it might make sense for us to be participating in some way in maintenance. <coughs> I think the snow and, and ice clearance is, I think we need to immediately make a decision on that <coughs> because of the direction that we've received. And I think some clarity on that specific level of municipal services that we should or should not be providing. Um, oh, no. uh, on that on that particular case, uh, one of the residents is not here tonight. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I don't remember his name, but he's halfway up on the left. Uh, that would be my right. Oh, okay. He indicated that um, some of the work that had been done in the culvert there had been done by the city oh, yeah. in in previous times to facilitate drainage that they weren't regular about clearing it out or stuff like that, but there had been had been city work done there. Regular city work. Give us a chance to talk, please. So well, it was preventative maintenance. I think it was ways. preventative maintenance that the city had done, yes. Yeah. 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 that Clement Street Bridge area can get dicey sometimes. Yeah. So it seems worth pursuing this a further? Well, the, I think the, the question is I just found the other day, and I, I think I found the applicable statutes that are looking for it. So it's Chapter 40, Section 6N, which talks about private ways and temporary repairs and ordinances and bylaws for that. What I haven't been able to find yet is the city has passed any ordinances that directed DPW or others to go fix Bottoms Road or any other private way in the city. But there's a statute on the books, and basically it says that... Um, Cities and towns may, by ordinance or by law, provide for making temporary repairs on private ways, and there's a number of criteria that needs to be panned out for it. So I don't know if this is what they're right. potentially referring to, but I haven't been able to find whether the city has an ordinance on the books that specifically there for Bottoms Road or any other private way. Well. <coughs> I also Excuse think me. that we're waiting to hear from the city solicitor on the extent of the government, so there's some information out relevant to what you're talking about that may help us to see what more we need to do on that. Is he still away? He came back tomorrow. today. Oh, yeah. So, could, could you speak with him and Absolutely. maybe get back to us about that? Mm -hmm. um, you're all welcome to stay, of course. It's a fascinating meeting, what with the contracts and everything. Okay. May I just ask one, one more question? On one. Um, so if something is deemed a private way, then that means that the abutters or the property owners own that way. Mm -hmm. So then they are then responsible for all plowing, paving, if there were potholes, right. fixing potholes, everything on it. Yeah, the abutters, in fact, do. They already, we didn't just make you own it. You already owned it. No, no, no. But what I meant was it, it has been maintained and planned by the city. Right. So now it would be entirely up to the abutters. No, they're making a, distinct, a possible distinction between maintenance and planning. We're, oh, we're well, researching and looking into So this today is just snow. Yeah, this is just yeah, snow and ice cream. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, I want to make sure everyone knows what you know, these private ways when we're talking about them is that we already had an opinion on this from Alan Seawall before about some trees that were in a paper street that was never accepted by the city, so technically it's a private way. And even though it's pinned and bounded in the deeds, reg and, you know, recording the registry of deeds that the people don't own it and they abut this, this street, technically they own, own up to the center line of it because it's never been accepted as a public way. So we'll get some clarification on that. The city attorney has been away for several weeks. And that's really helpful. Yeah. I just wanted, can I just make one comment, and then you're done talking about my street anyway, which is that the work done on the road was not for the sake of the road. It was done for the sake of Clement Street and the Clement Street Bridge. 
that's where all the stones and rocks go. So it wasn't work on the road done per se, it was work on the drainage for the city. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we okay, because yeah. no, you just said the Your uh, husband the showed us that and explained yeah. it. Okay, because someone just said the opposite, the work was done on the road. But that's not quite accurate, but okay, Fair. I'm glad Just two that. questions. Yes. One is, on the recommendation you're making tonight, uh, what's the timeline on the uh, stopping? In other words, when does it go into effect? Uh, so if it snows tonight, will we plow is the question. No. Right. I believe it has gone into effect. Okay, so as of Can, tonight, oh, we have a snowstorm tomorrow. No plow. No plow. Right. I believe that's no, no. the impact of the vote, yes. Okay. The other question is, how many residents of all the private ways that are being looked at, how do you have a like actual number of voting residents from those areas? There's in a number. No, no, I guess not. No, we don't. We don't know how many people live in the unit and how many registered to vote. Okay. Our first attempt was to get uh, put on the ballot a question allowing us to continue <coughs> along private ways. Right. I think it would have been really problematic, but we were willing to give it a shot. Yeah, that's next year. Um, from what I understood, it's illegal. Unless, well, I don't think we have to understand that I don't. I don't know that the law's been absolutely clarified by anybody. Well, the city attorney said it's, it's crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of snow and ice. In terms of snow and ice. Uh, so for the citizens who live on Bottoms Road who maybe are not happy with this decision, what do they have a recourse to go to the city council about this? Is there something the city council has over this? Yes. Okay. The ultimate authority <coughs> to accept a road is the city council. Uh, they would typically, let's say a street uh, puts together a petition and asks the city council to consider their road for acceptance as a public street. The city council would in turn refer that to the planning board and to the board of public works for their concurrence, assuming that both the planning board and the board of public works come back and say, yes, this looks like a good idea, um, then the city council would vote on the matter at some subsequent meeting. I think our, our question is, aren't, aren't there other ways of having continuing city services, and let's just include plowing hypothetically as part of this, um, without it being a public road? Not that I'm aware of, but... Yeah. Well, what about homeowners associations like in the cul-de-sacs and in private areas? Those are private, are private associations. Private. <coughs> private yes, yes, yeah. private. Yes, yes. yes. So there would be nothing that would prevent it. But the question was, is there is there a way around this board, I think, was the question. No, no, not really around the board. Around the... Around the no, definitely not, Terry. Uh, around the, the idea that something has to be determinedly public or a private way or a private way for public use, which as I understand it, by the way, has nothing to do with anything other than that it's open for traffic, anybody can come. Mm. That, that is, that is in fact, our understanding, is that it's yeah. black and white. Okay. Well, that was, um, that was and now I, I, I'm not a lawyer, I might be incorrect on that, but that's certainly the way it was explained to us. That, yeah, that, I mean, that's the guidance we can yeah. 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 Right. Or Repeated. the ballot question. For 10 years. Yeah. Either one or the other. Right. Or both. Yeah. For more than 10 years. This has been going on for years, and oh. we're, just, we're just finally getting around to it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So thank you all for coming. And I do mean that. I, I know what kind of effort this takes out of people's personal lives, and you know, it's Acceptance of Hillcrest Drive as a public way. Do I hear any motion? 
I got a motion for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that the BPW has evaluated Hillcrest Drive, and we feel that this private way would be a successful candidate for formal acceptance as a city, as a public city street. Therefore, we encourage residents, the residents of Hillcrest. No, they have to. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't read anything. Oh. You got to make it up. Oh, I have to make it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So we, we, so like we only it. do then I stop right there. The BPW has evaluated Hillcrest Drive and we feel that this is this, we recommend that. This private way could be a successful candidate for formal acceptance as a public city street. And, mm -hmm. and further we that, that second that. one was crafted. Oh. Let, let's say see, we preemptively went to those six streets. Right. Right. And and so we in, in those cases we don't have a petition in hand. Uh, in this case, we do. Mm -hmm. So we merely want to recommend Here. to the city council. Listen, I, I wrote one oh. for you. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> and I wasn't paying any attention okay. to you. Okay. Okay. Scratch the last two minutes of my my oh, verbal really? diarrhea. <laughs> All right. Uh, I move that the board of public works recommend to the city Northampton City Council that it accept Hillcrest on, Drive <laughs> as a public way. Excellent. Is there a second to this motion? <laughs> They're second. calling dibs on it, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think we're all, all in, any discussion? Who would like to talk about this? All in favor of making this recommendation to the City Council? Aye. 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 Okay, excellent. <laughs> uh, change order number one to contract 22-12 for the oh, keeping. Oh, oh. oh <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Change order number one to contract 222-12 for the DPW Barn Structural and Environmental Evaluation to tie and bond in the amount of $3,800. Move approval. So the total value is $3,820. Mm -hmm. um, basically, this is the work that was done by Hager Geoscience, who did the ground penetrating radar next door to determine where all the voids were underneath the slab. It wasn't part of tie and bond's original work where we found it necessary to find out what was underneath that structure to properly evaluate how we're going to fix it. So, Ned, this is not... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, Ned, this is not um, an effort to assess uh, the additional work that, that's going to need to be done in, in addition to what, what you guys are going to be able to do. This is for services already rendered? This is for services okay. that were rendered as part of, part of their report. All right. Thank you. When the truck broke through the floor last year, <laughs> they dragged the ground... Radar across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mike. Mike. All right. Uh, next contract for Camp High Utility Truck Body. Camp High. Is that right? Nap eyed. Nap eyed to, uh, oh, for one of these truck bodies to J.C. Madigan in the amount of $5,900. Second. We had three bids on this. Uh, Madigan was low bid at $5,900. High bid was quick neck, uh, quid neck machine for $6,950. Uh, this is replacing a utility body on the sewer foreman's truck, which is rotting and falling off as we speak. This includes installation. All in, all in favor of buying this utility truck body? Aye. 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 Uh, contract for snow plowing to Dean Melnick Trucking in the amount of seventy-five twenty per hour. Move approval. Second. There is no contract to sign on this. Um, you already awarded a contract to Mr. Melnick, and apparently at the last uh, meeting, there was three trucks listed when there was actually four trucks listed, an additional sheet that wasn't caught. So this is just adding, uh, we've already amended, the not amended the contract, but made it four trucks. This is just acknowledging that he will have four trucks this season. Do we need all those trucks now that we've got all those private ways out for you? <laughs> You're bad. You're just bad. <laughs> we still have 49 routes to do. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so we have. Uh, yeah, okay. So all in favor of uh, awarding this contract? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
contract for wastewater treatment plant flood emergency uh, services to Associated Electromechanics in the amount of $60,000. Move approval. This is a ballpark price that we think will take care of uh, this particular company and the work with the flooding at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, this is replacing basically every um, electric uh, engine or electric uh, motor that was down in the piping gallery down below that got flooded out. It also includes their wage rates, installation, and purchase of equipment. I did talk with Joe Cook about insurance on this. It's my understanding that all our expenses plus overtime will be covered with the exception of the $10,000 uh, uh, deductible. deductible. Excuse me, thank you. Does, um, does the city seem inclined to go after the uh, alarm company? We don't know what's going to happen yet. That will be up to Maya and the insurance company if they want to go after that. We did find out some other issues with it, too, is that there was two check valves in the sump pump that actually keeps water out of that particular gallery, pumping gallery, and there was no balls in the check valves. And these were the original check valves from 1979. So we don't know what happened there when the outside water got high enough in the influent well. It came down into the sump pump, and that's how it got into the pump in, the piping gallery. They've been replaced. They have new check valves. But that's how that particular room got flooded. But the, the balls were never there in the first place? Either that or they disappeared over... Road of the way? 30, well, it's clean water that it's pumping out. It's groundwater that's coming in for the sump pump. But both check valves in that line, I think it's a four inch line, or was, yeah, I think it was a four inch line, were missing both check valves, the balls inside. And they're so important they put in two. They did have two. <laughs> two faulty check valves. Now, I just I am sort of curious why we would never have covered that before, or that we would never have discovered that before now. Is it because it's always underwater? We've, we've, no, we've never had a problem with. Um, the sequence of events where staff wasn't able to get there in time to save the plant right. because the auto dial always worked, the backup generator worked, or right. it was like the stars were in terrible alignment that night. Or perfect alignment. But I mean, if there's <laughs> actually something missing, what I, I think the, the sump pump was probably running, and when it's running, it, you don't need the check valves. The oh, check valves keep okay. the water from coming back right. the wrong way. So the, the sump pump's in the gallery down here. It pumps up to the influent wet well. When the power went off, the influent wet well rose and rose and rose and came up over that pipe and down into the piping gallery. And the sump pumps didn't have any power, so they weren't operating. That's correct. Okay. That's, 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 so two things happened. And the auto dialer didn't work, so nobody, nobody knew about it. it. And, and the transfer switch on the generator didn't work. And did the generator not work also? The generator, we believe, fired up, but it ground faulted right away. And we don't know why it ground faulted. In fact, the next services uh, proposal we'll see from Kleinfeller is to do some testing and try to find out where it faulted and see if um, there is an issue that needs to be repaired. It's like a freaking space shuttle. Do we? You know? <laughs> does it make... Yeah. Does it make sense that there be some kind of testing? Well, that's what we're looking at doing, is actually doing a power-off test to make sure everything fires up correctly, um, probably like 2 or 3 in the morning, uh, so that flow's low, plant staff is there, backup power's there in case it fails and doesn't come back on. Um, we were talking to Kleinfelder about this. Apparently they did a more recently up in Pittsfield. So it can be done, this testing of generators. So, um, and, and does it lead to thoughts about any other systems? Well, it does. I mean, we, we already had a, a, a report done. Uh, that contract was report, uh, approved by the board at the last meeting. And it's about $3.3 .3 million is estimated to uh, replace the generator and the switch gears associated with it. This testing that Ned's describing, that, um I guess we don't have that contract now. We'll be we don't. At the next board meeting. There are proposals from Clyde that will do this testing on the generator. Part of the part of the thing that they're trying to tell us is 
How critical is it? What what should the schedule be to replace this generator and the switch gear and associated electrical components? Because it's a three point three million dollar project or whatever they've estimated. They're trying to give us some guidance in terms of how critical it is that it be done. In other words, can we look along for a year with what we have or is it something we need to do in six months or <coughs> can it be three years? So some of it's some fact finding to try to assess the health more completely of the right. the generating electrical system. Well, what, I guess what I'm driving at is, for example, you see uh, hazmat teams will run drills just to try it. I mean, is it is there a way we could just have a system of testing in place on this or other systems that might have determined in the past 30 years that the check valves weren't there or the the, system, the generator was going to ground out as soon as it... I mean, is it reasonable to wonder if uh, uh, some kind of regular testing once once a year, once every whatever amount of time? The generator, I believe, is by permit. It has to be started up, tested every six months. I think the staff does it down there every other month to ensure that it does fire up. But to mimic a full outage, we need... Uh, national grid involved, I mean, someone's got to shut the power off at the facility, and then what happens if it doesn't transfer back and come back on, where's our backup power system? So this is one of the reasons we want to do this test and be really find out what we do need. The other question is, is that if we lose power for an extended period of time, how many days is it before we start backing up um, sludge that we can't deal with and process sludge? We already know the odor control system doesn't work with the current generator. There's just not enough power there. Uh, sludge processing, I think it's two, two and a half days, and we're backed up. We need to process sludge on a regular basis. So if we lose power more than a couple of days, we are really in trouble down to plan. Right. I think, yeah, you, you asked a good question. Well, you know, what are the what are the standard operating procedures related to the emergency generator? I mean, are there things that we can do different or better or something? I think that's something that, you know, we're going to revisit when we have client girl to help us with the evaluation of the current system just to figure out... It's a very old system, so you know you, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to, to check and make sure that things are working. I don't think we ever would have cut the ball out then to be honest with you. The check valve and the ball's missing, but certainly checking complex electrical systems is something like you know, Yes, and I was speaking more broadly than merely the generator. I'm thinking across the board at the water treatment plant, at the The water treatment, the, the water treatment plant has a lot of a lot of SOPs for checking the generator and, and sort of fail safe types of things, and there was a lot of redundancy in the design. And it's a lot easier up there because it's a new facility and we have data. We have a lot of abilities to check things electronically and see how they react, and it's so much easier yeah. there because it's a new facility and the wastewater plant everything's 34 years old. Uh, we just don't have sophisticated ways of checking. So the, the only real vulnerability that you see is in the electrical. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. So uh, did we vote on the um, $60,000? No. We didn't. Mm -hmm. So $60,000, is it time and material? Is it not to exceed? How, how is that? This is a contract. It's basically we think this will cover all their work that they've done to date. From what we've seen, right. we might have to come back for a change order for fifteen hundred dollars. But we believe everything is up and running. Everything's corrected. We believe we have all the bills. They're under sixty thousand at this point. But it was just a contract just to cover up to that dollar amount. Okay. Okay. So, I'm, uh, just for point, of, I'm assuming this is not budgeted for. How do we? How do we? Do we have like a rainy day fund, or what do we do? We have um, we have cash funds. We have uh, capital accounts we can take <coughs> out of with the goal that insurance will reimburse us. Right, okay. So, and, and we expect everything but 10000 back. That's my understanding, talking with the procurement officer. Okay. There's a, a cash surplus in the uh, wastewater fund, and we're enterprise fund. We're permitted to borrow against for these kinds of things. Well, I think it's just there. It's Have a surplus a fund, and usually... Um, it's like a million dollars, right? There's an undesignated fund balance or a cash fund, and... Uh, if you take out of one, there's free cash that we can use. The other one is undesignated, which means uh, we'd have to go to city council and get a transfer of right. funds to right. use. That's what we did with the uh, 
the acquisition for the water lanes, the Skibiski parcel a couple of years ago. Okay. Great, thank you, Ned. You're welcome. Dave, you also? Yeah. Uh, so all in favor of approving this contract for uh, electromechanical repairs? Aye. Aye. Next contract, also for the wastewater treatment plant flood emergency to Xylem Goodwin in the amount of $48,200 for renting pumps. Move approval. This is the work necessary to ensure that we have enough pumping capacity at the influent wet wells. Um, when this whole thing happened, we lost two of our primary influent pumps. Um, so we had a one pump and one jockey pump left, and at high flows, we wouldn't be able to control what was coming into the plant, and we'd have another issue and overflow again. So we hired Gooden to come up here. They came up at, um, we called them at 4 in the afternoon. They were done setting up at 4 o'clock the next morning with all the pumps. They had uh, uh, three engine-driven pumps at a capacity of uh, 24 MGD, 24 million gallons a day, which is when it rains, it pours down there. And we typically see in heavy deluges of rain, peak flows in excess of 20, 20 million gallons a day. So the pumps were there for about a, a week and a few days, and this was the cost of doing it. Uh, set up, demo, mold, and moving everything around. And once again, it is wage rates for the, the job for all the, the labor and uh, people involved. Any, uh, yes. And is this part of the insurance also? Yes. So all in favor of approving this contract. Aye. Next contract for wastewater treatment plant flood emergency to electric motor service and sales in the amount of $8,900 to replace drives on the flight pumps. Move approval. Second. This was another specialty company that came in to out of Westfield. These were the two uh, flight um, influent pumps that the uh, BFDs, the variable frequency drives, failed in them. Uh, the motor boards had to be pulled out and sent out to Texas overnight for evaluation repair and then sent back as soon as they were fixed. So that covers uh, all the work associated with that due to the flooding. Discussion or questions about that? All in favor of approving the uh, contract to um, electric motor services? Aye. 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 Next, a contract for emergency response plan training. It's a proposal. Oh, it's a contract for an emergency response plan training proposal to Tata and Howard in the amount of six thousand dollars. Move approval. Second. It's very awkwardly worded for some reason. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Tim. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that. Because that's what they said, so that's what they wrote down. <laughs> They're engineers. We have an emergency There's response that. plan training proposal from Tate and Howard. Um, the, the water department is required um, annually by DEP to do emergency re re response plan um, training for our water department employees. We, we have an uh, emergency response plan that we've, that we've prepared for the water system that uh, has a lot of sort of what if scenarios if this goes wrong, you know, what do you do, what are people's responsibilities, that sort of thing. And we're required by the state to do training. And we do some informal training internally with, uh, with Dave Sparks, the water superintendent. But what we'd like to do and what this proposal, we'd ask, we'd requested this proposal from Tate and Howard was to do um, two day-long sessions where we would break all water department employees up into two groups. One group would attend a session one day, another group would attend a session the other day. And um, the training the training is important for a couple of reasons. One, because it familiarizes the staff with the contents of this plan, so that should we have an emergency, they'll be better equipped to respond in a, uh, in a, in a good way. Um, and there's a couple of other things. We've had a fair amount of staff turnover within the water department, so we've got new people within the division, new people with licenses, new people in different areas of responsibility. So we felt it was a great time to get people together in a room with Tate and Howard to do some response plan training um, of a group. Um, so this, that's what the proposal was for. Um, Tate and Howard is, uh, as a firm, they are certified by DEP um, as, uh, as approved trainers for, um, 
trying to get the language here for these technical contact hours. So if you're a certified operator, you have to get so many QCHs, these contact hours per year. So Tate and Howard is authorized by the state to provide this training. And our staff members that will sit through the training um, will get seven contact hours for participating in it. So, um, that's so, sort of the so just to clarify something, Jim. Is this 6000 to pay for the training, or is this to buy a proposal for training, which we will then pay for this at a later for, date? This is for the actual training. It's for two days of training. The other issue is that um, sometimes there are training, uh, there are more generic training opportunities for emergency re response planning where you'll have someone will sponsor training for a number of water departments, it ends up being more generic and not as useful as having actual training for the city's emergency response plan because we can talk about specific scenarios related to our system. Like so. stop balls and <laughs> check balls. Check balls. <laughs> so, Jim, when this provides credits to the staff, is that a cost avoidance issue for us that we don't have to send the staff outside to get? The net cost to us is less than six thousand dollars. Can we just get docile to do it? <laughs> He's got free time. Yeah. yeah. We could certify him. He's not on the clean water side. Ah yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm bad. coughs> All right, any further discussion about this? So it's a contract for emergency response plan training. And all in favor of approving the contract? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, one of the key moments this evening. <laughs> yes. Uh, the tree committee has often been the beneficiary of our newest member. And Dave is ready to pass the hat to Chris. Okay. Who's, who else is on the tree committee? I've had my time. That's not, you, that's not who's Oh, no, we, we have, this, this board has one ex officio, we have one member. Oh, okay, so I am the tree committee. You are our representative <laughs> to the tree committee. Gotcha, all right. They're really nice people. And, and uh, they're also talking about the trees in your neighborhood. Well, I was going to yes. say, because well, there's a tree in my neighborhood that's, that's <laughs> I've actually been polling my neighbors about this already to see where they where they stand on it. No, but because I'm not, I mean, generally speaking, I'm with the trees. I'm not sure I'm with this particular tree. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, right up your alley. So, so I hereby appoint you the our representative. I volunteer okay. wholeheartedly. <laughs> so, pursuant to that, we have a tree planting request <laughs> coming up as number 10. Uh, I make the motion that we uh, wait for our committee representative to make a recommendation to us. <laughs> the tree committee has already uh, voted to, if they want this project to move forward, mm -hmm. there's actually a set of letters in your board package from uh, Andrew Putman and yeah. Rob Hostel mm -hmm. about planting six trees on city property. Mm -hmm. And the reason this comes up tonight as a question is that they don't have certificates of insurance, which is required underneath our trench permit. So they're requesting an exemption for that. Historically, I have always waived planting of city trees by you know, third parties from the trench permit fee itself. I think there's a huge benefit to the city. So we waive our $250 fee. But we've always had certificates of insurance. These fellows don't have that, but they want to plant these city trees. So I talked to Joe Cook, the procurement officer, and he said as long as the board is uh, willing to make this a one-time exemption so it's not a precedent-setting event that this could happen. It's your policy that requires the certificate of insurance. The gray area is, is what happens if they dig down and strike a gas line. Well, typically all the city utilities are at least two and a half, three feet deep. When planting these trees, they're only going down a foot, foot and a half. So it shouldn't be an issue, and they said they're going to hand dig them also rather than machine dig them. I was going to bring up the hand digging, and I, I would think that could be a part of the approval, not in this case, but across the board, approval for the, for the not the requ to require the uh, liability insurance. And part of the reason for that is that there's no machinery 
digging. Right, but you could still get an overzealous digger. I was going to say, I, I hunt, I've hunt hand dug through a water system or two as a landscaper, so. <laughs> Okay. Um, I, would also, yeah. I would also like to recommend that regardless of how shallow we think they're going to dig, that they do the dig safe because I have been on sites where uh, a gas line 18 yeah. inches down has been uh, they did. disturbed. <laughs> and so um, if there's you know natural gas in a pipeline, I think yeah, that... No, but they're going, to do a, they're going to do a trench permit. Right, which oh, initiates so the dig yeah, safe so process. I, I just want to make sure safe, that we do yeah. the... Uh, so we're concerned about them hitting a gas line or whatever. What about personal liability? I mean, if they hit, dig their foot and you know shear off their foot, something like that, so are we liable then? Because if it's if it's private people doing work in the public way, doing so you could be liable. Way. Yeah. So can we have them sign a release? Does the city waiver of liability? Does yes. Does the city have a standard release for liability? On, on not necessarily just public work stuff, but do they have a is this, is this a form nineteen twelve dash A? It might be B, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, my point is, if we have a if we have a certificate of insurance that we request, and there's a reason for doing it, and mm -hmm. even though there might be reasons for not doing it, which are <coughs> valid, there's still a liability. Yeah. So it's three trees. Six. 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 They can't all be on 44 Washington Avenue. That's not enough land there for six trees. No. It just says six trees on city property. It doesn't say exactly <coughs> where the trees are going, but I believe they've been to the tree committee on this issue. Have they not? Um, yes, and the tree committee endorses the proposal, but I can't tell you. There were, I don't think we discussed the locations. Okay. They, were, they were selecting the locations. PJ. PJ. volunteers. Um, at some point in the past, haven't we allowed people to to use the city insurance? That one doesn't ring a bell. When we did Pulaski Park permits, and we got permission from the mayor, I thought that they used our insurance. They were covered by... When we insurance. waive fees... Did we we also waive really certificate not. of insurance? I thought they It's something we can talk to Joe Cook about and, and get an opinion whether or not there's a waiver that can be signed that's valid for the city in these particular instances. It sounds reasonable, but I'm not an attorney either. Well, it's, it just sounds like there's a, there's a bit of a distinction between people doing volunteer good works on public property for public consumption versus the more, you know, it's in the tree belt between my home and the street where it's a more private consumption. Yeah. So well, can we get a motion to approve this uh, subject to Joe Cook, figuring out the details? Yeah, including the possibility of a release. Yeah, I think okay. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> That we, we <laughs> <laughs> I, only, I only prepared one motion tonight. I didn't realize I was going to be on the tree committee. <laughs> uh, I make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the tree committee to approve the um, waiving of the certificate of insurance uh, pending the approval of uh, the city town, uh, procurement, procurement, procurement officer. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving uh, this request? Aye. Stormwater and flood control. Um, I spoke to Paul. Spectre. Yeah. Spoke to. No, I just was checking. Like, did you? Is this on the? Just old business or? Old is business. This, I spoke with Paul Spector today. He's just back from Italy. Had a wonderful time. You see my daughter? <laughs> uh, he didn't mention it specifically, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and he said, really, I need to check in with Bill. My intention was to, and I've left him a message, my intention was to see if I can nudge the process along. I'd like to get that next meeting. For the holidays, I, yeah. Yeah, where we talk about how we might finance uh, the costs that we have coming up. 
Um, I've also been approached by um, Jack Fortier, who used to be on the board here. In fact, he used to be the chairman of the board back in the late 90s, maybe. Um, he's a large owner of commercial property, big parking lots, and he's concerned. He, he concedes that it looks like some kind of a fee might make sense, uh, but he's just concerned that it be structured in a way that feels fair to the commercial sector of the city. Uh, similarly, Suzanne Beck is interested in getting involved in that. Um, what I mentioned to Paul is that maybe if it looks like a fee is a way that people are interested in pursuing, uh, that it might make sense to put together a little committee that there's some re has some representation from the business community in order to figure out what's a fair way of organizing this fee. So that's all I have. I'm sorry, it's my husband's yeah, birthday and I have to go, go take him out to dinner. So, excuse me. Okay. Sir, sure. thanks. Thank you, MJ. And thanks for those motions. <laughs> all, all of them. Uh, Arts Night Out Crosswalk Painting Event. This has come both for the board a number of times, and I just want to let you know I did get a call from Arts Night Out, and they have uh, actually decided they're not going to go forward with the project. <laughs> Based on the fact that we're not going to restripe our sidewalks like North Adams or um, Turner's Falls did, which has the longitudinal bars running up across the roadway, you we have it. a design. They don't feel that there's enough black canvas to Real paint. Estate, yeah. So that project is off. All right, thank you. Okay. Solid waste planning update. Well, you can be that. Yeah, we can do it. We can do some of it. We convened, our subcommittee convened as a regularly posted board meeting uh, last Friday morning um, to pick up where we left off our discussions last spring. Um, we reviewed the uh, bids that the department received for hauling waste and other types of uh, recyclable materials and uh, we came up with a pretty long list of things for the city engineer to do and we decided to reconvene uh, on November 2nd. Is that correct? That's very good. And we made no decisions. Thanks a lot. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. BJ needs to post that. You have to tell me. Post haste. We're going to meet November 2nd. What time? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Here at the DPW? Yep. Did you reserve Row. the room? So I'm just going to yep. make a little uh, comment Agreed. on the reuse solid waste committee. Um, first of all, I'm again astounded by the amount of people that are liking the Facebook reuse page, and, and it continues to get, uh, get a lot of response. Continues, it got a big bump after the, um, the on the morning that we were doing our private ways visits, and the reuse committee was running the. Um, uh, recycled art fair, which is a big success. Yeah, it sounds like it went really yeah. well. Um, however, um, um, the mayor has made it clear that he does not want a reuse facility to be part of the Florence community, the old school, the old grammar school, is that the community yes. center? And um, so he said, nope, no reuse facility there, have it on the um, uh, local street transfer station grounds. But we've already made it clear that there's parking is an issue, we can't do it here, we've looked at buildings, and MJ assures me that she made that very clear to him in her discussions that we couldn't do it or not. So I, I'm really sort of frustrated that we're not getting support from the mayor on something like this that is just, you know, it may not be the most significant aspect in terms of Recycled material having a reuse facility, but it is one element that um, would be positive for our community. Have you identified how many square feet you need? It's not. It's no. Um, and a container is still possible, and so there's still the Smith Belt ground, so maybe that's the next direction. But but we know it can't be here, and he's suggesting that it be here. So. So I don't get that. We'd be happy to make a reuse center as part of the uh, new DPW facility. Uh, 
<laughs> I gotta say, I, I, I do not feel like the staff, not, not you two, of course, probably it's someone over there, but um, I, I think there could be a little flexibility here. I really do. I don't see why something the size of a tractor trailer truck sideways couldn't be approximately over there. You know, it doesn't have to be right in the center of the hornet's nest of the uh, compactor. But I thought their concern was parking. Well, well parking, the snow trailer. removal operations, because we push all the snow across over to that fence line for snow removal or snow plowing activity. And there's, there's, and the other concern that's been ongoing is just the traffic on Saturday, or if we open another day, whatever that. Yeah. All of a sudden, you have people just milling about, and now the traffic line is not there, but it's out to this building. People trying to get their trash in, because people are looking because at this facility. Because police already directing traffic on Saturday. But they're out at the street only. I understand, but what I'm saying is, is that how much work we don't have any unused capacity, essentially. On Saturdays for this for the transfer station lot for this area right here is what it seems to me. If you have a police directing traffic and, and cars going in and out, so I so wouldn't take no for an answer, but I you know I well, she she actually um, pushed it for an additional three weeks and. No, no, I'm talking about here. Oh, oh, oh. Here, I, well, has anyone tried to figure out uh, how many additional vehicle trips it will be? I mean, I don't know. But it's not necessarily the trips. I think it's the space that's available and the multi, you know, the variety of uses that happen in the yard here and, right. and, and trying to coordinate one more activity with everything else that happens. Right, so theoretically it would be this it would be the same volume of traffic, but there'd be another stop or the cars would be queued up longer as they walk their trash. It would be longer because you'd be even try to find something to to take away. Yes. I mean, right. It's two so right. There's, there's, a, there's a kind of a browsing component. They're spending yeah. more time yeah. in uh, the parking that is available, which is kind of limited and it does get back. Yeah. I've been I've come here Saturdays yeah. often. The guys, so, you know, oh. in the, our staff in the garage are horrified that someone is really going to get hurt out here someday just because of the level of activity that we have now. Right. Can I just tell you how many times I'm not, I park on that side and just walk in in the morning and leave. I cannot tell you how many times I have almost gotten hit out there. Yeah. People pull in here and they do not they do 10 or 15. No, they're they're flying awesome. in yeah. doing 40 well, or 50, and they, they don't see us, and they do, not, over with. they do not stop for it. I'm telling you, we've all almost had close calls out here. Speed I just bumps. worry someone walking across the lane. That's what we need is traffic calming. So I yes. think the recycling <laughs> shopping <laughs> uh -huh. place should be oh. right just inside Next the to big Peter's <laughs> Stone, kind of like right there. <laughs> no, I think actually more out of the travel lane. <laughs> they have to go around it. <laughs> Like a chicane. Yeah. And the mayor wrote the traffic common manual and presented it many years ago. I remember that. Yes, he did. Well, Smith, Smith folk is still on the agenda, but I just wanted to. I think I, I mentioned it to uh, MJ, but I don't know if you were there or not. What about what about the facility that the city owns um, two down from the synagogue? Is that the water department? It's the water department. And when they scheduled to be up here, we assumed that we would be selling that building to help pay off part of the facility. Right. Um, the other buildings the city does have is where the survival center is, but they've given most of that space up. The only ones that are left right now are um, outside school maintenance staff that are there. So, survival center still has some room possibly for a container? What you're saying? No. You're saying no. They, they've taken over most okay. of that facility okay. down there. Okay, but where water department? I thought okay, that was by the synagogue. No, it's it's if you're looking at the synagogue, it's, it's the like two side. two down the other way from the. Oh, the other side. way. Okay. Down the right. But it won't be available until so there's a new facility. That's correct. All right. But I mean, how well? It doesn't look like it's that active. Well, the other thing, too, it's, it's actually city water department property or yeah. the water commissioner park property, not general city property. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So um, the thought is that this is open every day, sort of like the recycling center would be open every day. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And there is a shopping component to it. Yes. Because then you have to have it turned over. You're not just dropping something off. You're, you're picking stuff up. Buying stuff. Yeah. Okay. There was some discussion the other day about the Glendale Road facility, whether there was room to do it over there. This was discussed in the subcommittee meeting a little bit. That's a possibility, but um, I think it's one of the issues. What, well, right. it's remote. I mean, one of the yeah. goals that was explained to me from the reuse committee was that we're looking for a site that's more central that mm -hmm. will be at the forefront. People will see it. Actually, in a way, it makes this facility, the location, the best because one of the one of the I think Mac was um, one of the mm -hmm. people on the reuse yeah. committee. He very eloquently described, you know, if this thing is in front of people. When you're bringing trash, you know, you're going to say, oh, geez, you know, here's something that maybe it's got some value I can yeah. bring it to the use of this. So there's a lot of, you know, it makes a lot of sense to have these things together, for sure. Yeah. So where's the new building going to go when you build it? <laughs> Which phase? Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, one of those. Behind the big green right. barn and to the left. Right. Over against the property line. Mm -hmm. But even with phase one, it still keeps this facility next Open, door as yeah. storage. Yeah. The open storage. Okay. Water supply dams? Every once in a while, I like to double back and tell the board what's happened with all these contracts that have been approved. So that's, that's, this is one of those moments. Um, Earlier this summer, the board had approved a contract with a value I don't recall with GZA to help us update our emergency action plans um, for the six city dams. So we worked pretty diligently through the summer um, on updating these emergency action plans. Um, there's a lot of logistics that were worked out. Nicole Sanford did a lot of good management on this particular project, helping, up, helping us coordinate with con uh, representatives from Hatfield, Waitley, and Williamsburg. These are towns that are in the inundation zones downstream <coughs> of the city's water supply dam. So um, we were able to complete the EAPs. We had some training with the water department. All the towns were there. Um, we did get uh, a lot of assistance from Northampton's emergency management corner coordinator, Josh Shanley. Chief Duggan was uh, approved the plans as well when they were done. Um, so there was a lot of work that went into that, and these were updated and submitted to the Office of Dam Safety, and we received a, a letter back from them acknowledging that they were done in accordance with the regulations and that they were, you know, they were, they were accepted as being updated. And these are documents that we need to update annually, and we feel like we've got a, a very solid document that um, we'll be able to, to update annually with, with our own staff now. Um, so it was a success. It was quite a bit of work, and not, not a, uh, a short amount of time. So. Okay. Gary, any? Uh... Uh, I could mention that the Paris County Dam Repair Project is underway, and um, I don't know if you noticed that we threw down the pond last week, <laughs> and that we filled over the weekend, and then it came back down again. Um, but they started work, and I just, the whole thing is kind of fascinating. There's a the city sewer main, or there is a city sewer main. There's a city sewer main on both sides of the pond, and there's one that's almost like, really under the, under the dam, into the dam that they're working on. It won't be affected by this, it's on the dry side. Um, but they're, they started to deliver material today, so that they're placing uh, anchor stones at the bottom of the armory, which is real good start of uh, refacing the dam and uh, they're starting it they will be starting at the spillway end and working their way upstream and it's 800 feet long so the first 200 feet is just armoring and reshaping and then there's about three or 400 feet that's open cut excavation to go down 12 feet completely remove the dike um, and new material will come in and be backfill re uh, you know, back and reshaped and then the last section is just reshaping and then there'll be a follow-up project either next year or the year after where we'll do permeation grouting on the first section which um, which would just make it tighter. I just thought that was a fascinating um, but 
some of the issues around the earth, I thought was sort of an interesting approach to make it tight, sort of compacting it from within, as opposed to banging on it from above. So they just drill holes in the ground and they pour strutting under pressure and it goes like that. Oh, okay. That locks them all up. Oh, all right. so it's like so, a... Yeah. That's cool. Tapes. Like every two to three feet. We'll do some testing, too, to figure out if it's enough. And do more if it isn't. Yeah, I hope you don't find a gopher. <laughs> well, uh, we did the front end loader when it drove up on the on the dike uh, in the section with it, which uh, will be completely reconstructed. Uh, is punched a hole in the top of the dam that went down about a foot uh, or more, and it's right in a place where we knew we had a uh, muskrat den. Nice. Um, and that was uh, probably close close to the center of the structure. So they were. Um, we did an inspection in 2007, which was in between the years of inspection that were official, and we, we were measuring burrows that went at eight feet, and presumably they went like this at eight feet. Um, and that area was one of them. So, so is your excess material going to the landfill? That's why I don't know where it's question. going. Where is it going? I saw, a, I saw a truck going in today, and I just wondered. They've hauled in a, a small amount of material for the, the it's a, a load of sand there. I'm not sure what they're using that for exactly, but uh, they did drop in the anchor stones, which are three foot diameter stones. They came from Lane's Quarry in the Notch, so it's really big, gory stuff. And they have a, a big excavator with a thumb, and they're putting those in one at a time. So they have to do a, a cut that's really out in the soft stuff and hit something solid. It should be clear if there really is something solid there yet. We did one test pit, and they sort of thought it was marginal. Yes. Are they doing any dredging as part of the project? No. When you drew down the pond, was there a lot of sediment build up from no, your last No, not at all. Good. Uh, as soon as we drew down the pond, it was like the bottom was right there. So, no. Yeah, it's, well, it's, because you haven't you just dredged it like three or four years ago. Yeah, but there are, couple, there are a couple of islands already. Yeah. Well, we dredged, what we did in 08 was we dredged uh, 10 years after the last dredging was 98. And we only took out 12,000 yards, and that was driven by budget. The cost of hydraulic building was very expensive, so we didn't take out very much. We left in a lot. And I'd say that the, the amount of material that they took out, I'd say, is, hasn't been completely replaced yet, but it's close. In the five years? Right? In four years. They, they finished the dredging at the end of December of 08. So slightly less than four years ago. Yeah. You had a little sediment transport about a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, old U.S. Gauge Station, is not too far up the river. Uh, it's pretty much where the pond ends and the river starts. There's a little uh, concrete V weir, and it had an abutment on the right side, which would be the hospital side, that's been, um, I'd say, breached. The yeah, abutment is breached. completely. Yeah. And it's been breached against a very steep mm -hmm. um, glacial hill embankment. And when, it, when the flows get going, it has a lot of um, turbulence there, and it cuts, and that stuff comes right down the river. Yeah. So anyway, okay. it's kind of fun. I, I was asking Ned about the, uh, the sewer main, which seems to be full of water, and I have a feeling it may be by design, but I'm could be the siphon design. Yeah. So the city was out um, showing, um, marking out and that. I think the guy actually hand excavated. I don't think they do it. Did your guy do it? Do you, do you know? Somebody hand excavated the three manhole covers that are were under about a foot of um, sod soil. So on the dry side of the dam. On the dry side, yeah, but it's definitely in the dam, which kind of surprised me. I thought it was further back. I thought it was closer to the gravel road. So coming down from Hospital Hill. No, um, it's coming from it's the sewer main that almost blew out on uh, off of Federal Street. That, where that that's that's the line, the Federal Street line. So it follows around there and it crosses the river right just upstream of the pond. There's two big concrete siphons there. And then it goes around, follows the, um, the gravel road or the edge of the yeah. pond basically, and then crosses again right uh, downstream the spillway. And then there's two big concrete boxes there. So, okay. anyway, they've got it all, it's been stumped and grubbed and uh, they'll be starting to actually do work. Yeah, they 
pull out that one. Oh, they pulled out a lot of trees. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of stumps there. Big. Okay. Not good. Okay. Chris? A lot of leaves. Just happy to be the tree guy. That is kind of fun. <laughs> oh, wait, wait to get in there. Mike, how about you? We, um, we got a copy of a letter from 48 Country Way. Resolved. And I swung by after lunch today and I saw equipment. So is this, the Lisa, that was is this the Lisa Gibbs letter? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask why that wasn't on the agenda. I was kind of curious. Remind us what that was. I mean, I saw the letter, but now I just slipped my mind. Last winter, a uh, big oh, yeah. machine kind of slipped off the pavement yes. and made a gouge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Mike does a great job on your. Yeah. Oh. yeah thank you. Thank you. I think it was really helpful. Uh -huh. We're going to employ more streets and we'll see if it seems. Yeah. Well, if, you know? if I can take my turn now, that's what I had on my... First of all, I wanted to thank everybody for getting started on this because I know you guys have been working on this for a long time. And so, I, you know, now we're started. So, hey, cool. Well, now we're already doing something. Keep, yeah. Keep I mean, ever since I've been on the board, I've just been hearing this. So yeah. then I was like, when are we going to do the next bit? Oh, the next, next batches? private ways, yeah. So, so Terry's asked that I come up with the next 10 streets to look at, which I'm working on. And we're going to try and do it again before this plowing season? We're going to try. Yeah, let's do it. We're getting close. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. a little leery about that. We may want to consider, I didn't want to do it within, I want to have this discussion in front of potential, you know, beneficiaries, but we may want so to. You are the recording board. device, for example. That's okay. That's, it's different. Uh, we may want to consider a discussion of some sort of waiver if we get too far into the season. Well, that, that relates to your... Yes. I... Yeah. There's some discussion about that. I figured um, there would be. The way, the way we're doing it... As the advance are showing some good faith, we're chipping away at the list, we're making his determinations right. at both ends, and people have been encouraging us for ages to, to grab the low-hanging fruit, although that makes for some difficult um, meetings. Um, these are supposed to be the easy ones tonight, although it's very uncomfortable making decisions like this. Uh, Hillcrest was easy. Um, but the two models are we chip away and either streets start moving toward acceptance or they drop off the list. Or we just declare that for this winter, everyone gets plowed. But before next winter comes, we'll either have newly minted city streets or there'll be private ways never to be heard of again. Yeah. <laughs> There's just, just two different ways to handle the plowing. Yeah. And at the moment, we seem to have been encouraged to do the cross them off the list one at a time. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it makes sense, especially since we've started. Mm -hmm. We should great. continue with the plan we have. Yeah. That's great, yeah. So what are we doing on Saturday? Mm -hmm. well, you, Not enough time for a public has meeting. To be this. Probably yeah, the following have, Saturday. Oh, I'd love to do 10 in one day. Oh, <laughs> let's do it. Oh. <laughs> but I, we, we do have to include a stop at a uh, place where they have chocolate croissants. That's right. Uh, Vegan. Not vegan. No, 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 no. Not vegan. We did the vegan thing. This time it's got to be non vegan. I think like so. bacon. Be great. <laughs> bacon <laughs> stuff on the top of croissant. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's Sip is great. They had great breakfast. Oh, okay. And good coffee. Is that the right. one that's on near Harlow's? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, yeah they're good. They are good. So, all set? And then you're all set with that? That's them. it. Yeah. So, um, I did get a letter from the mayor just the other day, and I meant to get in the board package, but I didn't. Uh, we have a new building committee that's been formed for the expanding the DPW complex. It's the original building committee, uh, three members of the public, and two city councilors. So, um, councilors are Councilor Carney and Councilor Tacey. And um, one of the residents of Northampton is also a name, which is a union body next door, an employee that actually serves on the... Uh, they call it the executive branch. I uh, he, think he's the secretary of their of their union. And then we have two private residents. Uh, one is a contract uh, works for construct, and the other one is a architect engineer. So hopefully in the next two weeks or so, we'll be setting up our first meeting. 
with the new committee and basically doing an overview and then do tours and then get down to the nitty gritty once again. Gary? I was just curious about who, who's the architect and who's the person that construct? Um, I'd have to go get the names off my desk. Okay. I don't know them off the top of my head. The, um, uh, the architect engineer works for Bay State Health Systems. Um, his wife is Juanita Fors Forsythe, whoever saw the Kitlet Center next door. Mm -hmm. Really cool idea. So project manager type person. Mm -hmm. And um, I forget the person name from Construct. Is it one of the owners? I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks. Is this back to day one or? I think it's a going back to day one as far as getting them up to date and look at what we did in 2002 and just update them and then rolling out. Um, the, the mayor wants a transparent process that he feels didn't really occur this last building committee, which and they're all public meetings, and they're advertised and so on, but it wasn't well attended by the public by any means. So it's also drawing public support for the project also. I think it's encouraging. It is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, it. Jenny? Michael? EJ? No? I just have one more question. Sure. When you talk to Alan, could you ask him if there is such a category as private ways for public care? Yeah. yeah. I think it was made up myself. Absolutely. The only thing I've seen like that, we've had some, we do, um, it's actually down where Merrick Lane is, by the registry, or the, to, yeah, the registry. Mm -hmm. Out and back between Fitzwillies, it's all private back there, mm -hmm. but the city has an easement for pass and repass of its citizens to mm -hmm. use that. So that's a kind of a, it's not a private way, but it's private property for public good, for public use. Mm -hmm. But it's a dedicated piece for that. That's the only one that comes to mind. I mean, yeah, just, just ask. to know for this, yeah. I would certainly like to know. Yeah. One of the things that one of the uh, members, one of the audience members brought up was this idea of how it feels. And, you know, I kind of appreciated her point, but it really... It is private, you know. If you if you uh, drive onto private property, you get a feeling that you don't belong there, and that's you know what you call it perception. Um, is it Merrick Merrick yeah? Merrick Lane Merrick Lane. My perception is that's public because there's parking such, there's, yeah. there's parking spaces. Uh, there's you access like to a parking lot. Right. There's, there's a, uh, there's a it's surrounded by uh, commercial buildings, so <clears> the <throat> assumption I, I feel perfectly comfortable driving through there. It just looks completely public, but even though it's private parking. Yeah. yeah. But for instance, the Meadow Street Street had way. that met, yeah had that old sign on it that said private way, and the reason you put that up is so people don't come down your driveway. Right. right. You don't post it if you want people using it. I know the know? first time we looked at Taylor Street, it did say private way there. Yeah. That sign is gone. If, if you Google private ways in Massachusetts, fairly high in the list of, of things will be, a, uh, I don't know what the title of it is, but it's by, written by a lawyer at a law firm in Pittsfield, and so you will identify that clearly talks about private ways in Massachusetts. And it's, that's the 75 pages that I, I have it. I forgot it. Did I give it to you? Or you did. Anyway, um, there's more than there than you want. <laughs> um, all right, I've got a couple of things. In the street, by the this is pursuant to my occasional rants about the cuts in the pavement. In the street by the post office, the gas company has put in a series of like five foot by five foot squares. Which post office? The main post office, Bridge Street. Bridge okay. street. Yeah, first street. Yeah. It's like bump, 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 bump. And, you know, and they, they went in with the diamond saws, and the saws go well past the square. So, you know, there's, we have the freeze-thaw thing. It hasn't started yet, but it's going to. And it just, check it out when you just drive past the post office. Bump, 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 bump. Hey. Use a new car. You Get your shopping service check. Hey, it's a Mercedes. Come on. It's yeah, not a car, it's a Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> Stand up in the back. Maybe you need a Mercury. Maybe he's in Bethesda. 
Well, anyway, it, again, it, uh, it strikes me that we should exercise more control over the cuts on the roadway. Heaven knows we're not about to repave Bridge Street. How long, how long ago is that happening? Yet? They're working there now. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, mm -hmm. uh, we have a staff meeting there every Wednesday morning at, at the Reese, and they've been there for the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so maybe it's just temporary pavement. They can find out. But it certainly seems like they put a lot of effort into it if it's temporary. Maybe it's a practice and rumble stick for some traffic. Traffic coming, coming. sure. <laughs> and the other thing I, I have, it's not, um, I don't expect you to say, oh, it's right here, but inventory policy. Okay. We're looking for what the nature of the inventory collection system will be, how often it's revisited, uh, thoughts as far as how to, what to do once surplus property has been identified. Right? And we're all yeah. going back mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're talking about brush holes too. Mm -hmm. When I was... Um, and, and I guess you, uh, perhaps a report on the inventory that you did do. Mm -hmm. Inventory's been done. And so maybe, you know, when you get back to us, yeah. is anything missing? You know, that sort of thing. We don't, or we don't know. We won't know until the next inventory, perhaps. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's all I got. Move for adjourn. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 Thank you all. Nice job. Thank you.